welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Gwen Dwight Dow, and I'm speaking with... Malika Potter. And we're currently in Chicago for Chicago Roboto, where I, this morning, had the absolute pleasure of listening to Malika speak. Uh, Malika, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Uh, I work at Pinterest in San Francisco, and I started in Android when I was interning at Google. And they put me on an Android team, and I never touched Android <laughs> in my life before. They said, okay, you have three weeks to learn, and then you can start working. And so uh, in three weeks, I tried to cram as much Android into my brain as possible. I loved it. It was awesome. And what, three years later, here I am. Awesome. Well, they really put you in the fire there. I, I like oh, that. Yeah. It's like three weeks to learn, and then you just kind of like, you just do it. Yeah. That's it was it was an experience. <laughs> a positive one. A positive one. <laughs> like, good, good clarification. It was a yes, good experience. It was experience. a positive experience. So speaking of good experiences, um, again, I mentioned that I went to Malika's talk today, and it was awesome. It was about a subject that we actually really love on this channel, and that is accessibility. And something that I picked up today from, from your talk that I really liked were, I, I guess I, I like to just think of them as really concrete, actionable things. And I think that you know, um, when we think about adding accessibility into applications, it, it can be a little daunting. Where, where do I start? Is, yeah. it, is it just setting content description on all my image views? Is like, am I done? Um, but, and I think that's a challenge that I personally have been kind of facing um, lately with trying to kind of like starting to approach bringing accessibility to my app. And I think that was one of the great things about Malika's talk. She, you had, you had a great list and a lot of great suggestions on what to do about accessibility. So just kind of to ask you, Malika, what are some steps like that you took when you were first kind of starting your accessibility initiative, I guess, at Pinterest? Yeah, well, the first step we did, which is one of the first steps that I recommend doing in the how section, the mm -hmm. how section <laughs> of the presentation is to run your own personal audit and you, uh, for me, I went on the Google Developers website, I found all their criteria, added a few of my own, you made a two-dimensional matrix, like this x-axis is uh, the flows, the main flows of the mm -hmm. app, and then the y-axis is uh, all the different things that it should be mm -hmm. succeeding on, and then I color-coded them with notes based on what was working. And the first time I did that, the whole, almost the whole thing was red. And red's bad. Red is bad. Bad, bad. Red. Green, green was working, <laughs> yellow was like kind of, and then red was bad. So you were talking about things like maybe TalkBack? Yeah, TalkBack, which is basically like the most important component of Android accessibility is when you turn on TalkBack, because if you don't know, um, should I just summarize Yeah, TalkBack? no, no, definitely. All yeah. right, so TalkBack is Android's kind of screen reader. You can turn it on if you go to settings, accessibility settings, ex and turn on TalkBack. And when you're swiping through uh, a screen, as you go through the uh, various items on it, it selects them and it will read them out. If you have an icon and it's labeled, it'll mm -hmm. say like, oh, send button mm -hmm. or back button, that right. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it also comes with custom gestures and gestures you can make. And one of the main ones is because if you imagine you're not looking at it and you're just swiping around with TalkBack, you might not hit the button that you're trying to go for. Mm -hmm. So you can individually swipe through using, well, the Tinder swipe. <laughs> <laughs> you can individually swipe through that. Um, and that's the first thing you look at. And when like all every button mm -hmm. that you that you click on is saying button unlabeled <laughs> and you can't swipe through things, you yeah. realize, oh my gosh, there's a lot of progress to make. What, what are some other things that you need to look at when you're get, implementing accessibility? Oh yeah, oh, when you're auditing? Oh yeah, when, when you're like, auditing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's some stuff that you can't catch in TalkBack. I mean, you need to look at your color contrast and that sort of thing because, uh, there's what we use is the EU standard, uh, accessibility standard for colors, and that's usually for web. So if you you're, if you know web people, they might have those resources, or you can just look online. So you should check if that works. I mean, checking if your tap targets are large enough, if your icons are large enough, because if you're following material design, they should be, oh, I guess it's like, like 48, 48 by yeah. 48. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of apps have much smaller. No, smaller I, icons I think and that buttons. happens a lot too, just because, especially because when you want have a design, and a lot of times, even the icons, I think even in like the material design icons, some of the icons are like, oh, this is actually like 24 dp, but you're supposed to make the actual touch area yeah. larger. And then I think there's like, there's like something, I think I compiled a list of like 25 different items to audit for, but I think those are the main ones, plus making sure that you don't have any audio only signaling where, um, Audio only signaling, so you finish something, you get a ding, yay, it's mm -hmm. done, but there's no corresponding toast coming up or mm -hmm. notification or whatever. The same thing with visual only signaling where you, if TalkBack is on, when your toast is popping up and being like, you've uploaded a photo, you should be shooting out a TalkBack event right? so that it also says that. Um, that one's a little more complicated, but. 
Um, another great thing that I think that you talked about is like once you finish your audit, that yeah. there are some great kind of like, I guess, techniques or tools to kind of um, not just get your app to kind of an accessible um, to, to, to make your app more accessible, but also to kind of keep it that way. So something that Malika <laughs> talked about, which I thought was fabulous, was actually writing linters yeah, for accessibility. Can you talk a little bit about how you use that? Yeah. I work at Pinterest, so I lead the accessibility initiative at Pinterest. And one thing that we've done there is I wrote custom linters that track if uh, various icons and buttons are labeled. And if you try to upload a UI with it without them being labeled as content descriptors, and it's just an extension of the standard Java standard Java accessibility linters. Uh, it breaks the Jenkins build. And I know oftentimes I get messages like, why is my Jenkins build broken? I go, did you look at the error message? And they say, oh, I need a content descriptor, that sort of thing. And so what it does, because before, before we had that, I know I had talked to some of the iOS team who were also trying to do some accessibility stuff and they didn't have this linter. And they had told me that yeah, we labeled the stuff. And then like two weeks later, we came back and nothing was labeled again because people had changed out the icons or something for some new design idea. Those weren't labeled. And so I was just like, oh, I say like that. I was just saying, thinking, you know what? Before I go and change, and I went through hundreds and hundreds of XML files and manually labeled them. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure that once my work is done, that no one can roll it back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of was uh, wondering, like, um, it's sometimes it seems like, especially if you have an app and a code base that's already mm -hmm. huge and your app's already been out for a few years. And it, it seems like a lot of times trying to get accessibility in there um, is difficult. What's a good way to get started that's not so daunting? Um, what I like to do is kind of, well, think about your flows, right? So you have a sign-up flow. In mm -hmm. Pinterest, we have like a sign-up flow, a home feed flow or whatever. And think about if you are someone who wants an accessible experience and how they're going to come through as a new user. Because the quite probably there aren't a lot of people current users who are using accessibility software for you. Mm -hmm. So think of it, can they sign up and start by fixing sign up? <laughs> and then point. what's the first flow? That What's their first flow and the main flow they're going interact, to interact with? In Pinterest, the main flow is our home feed, obviously, after sign up. Mm -hmm. And those are obviously going to be the priorities that you want to fix because those are the main use cases. And I find if you isolate it into the various flows, because we have lots of other flows, you know, we have our news feed, we have our profile, we have all that sort of thing. But they taking it flow by flow, um, <laughs> flow by flow, uh, I find makes it a lot less daunting. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Like, and, as, and as you said, and I wish I also laughed at, it's like, obviously, if a user cannot sign up for your app, there's no way you're going to be able to get them. The, the accessibility in other parts of your app won't make any sense because yeah. they can't even get there in the first place, yeah. which is fabulous. When, um, we, when we first started working, we had a joke that my my settings app, the settings part of our app was already pretty much defaultly accessible. It was actually really accessible. <laughs> we were all patting each other on the back. And then uh, my friend, my coworker Christian came by. And I was like, look, settings accessible. He's like, nice, but is sign up accessible? Like, how are they going to get into settings? And I was just like, okay, point taken. <laughs> and then we still continued to celebrate because this was an exciting moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, something else that you mentioned, which um, I've always been curious about and, and, and that you talked about was actually doing user testing with mm -hmm. um, with users that will actually be, that actually need the accessibility features. So could you tell us more a little bit about that, your user testing? So we work with a, in San Francisco, we mm -hmm. work with an advocacy group called Lighthouse and they set up a user testing study with us and they brought in about seven people over the course of the day, seven or eight, and each one had a different platform. So we had web and iOS and Android. And we kind of walked through the main flows with them, got their feedback, and just spent a lot of time listening. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, these people are, they use this accessibility technology every day. And so they're comfortable with it and used to it at a level that someone who doesn't use it can't be. Mm -hmm. And so watching how they interact with the app using their accessibility technology, I feel is just such an amazing and learning experience that we came back from it with way better sense of what our priorities should be when uh, making technical fixes. Did you work on that accessibility on your, all on your own or have you kind of brought other people onto um, the... So it started out when I started running the audit originally. I started, actually Tom mentioned this in my talk, um, started out on my own mm -hmm. and I started, you know, promoting. I was, you know, t giving internal presentations, mm -hmm. talking it up with my coworkers, talking to my ma management, being saying, you know, this is something I'm passionate about, and you should allocate 20% of my time to do this, which they did, um, which is super great. And as I was doing this, I actually found out that um, on the other two platforms, web and iOS, that there were engineers who were siloing it along 
going alone, also making improvements, but none of us were communicating. Oh, wow. So what we did is yeah. connect each, connect to each other, and then together we could share our improvements. And then each of us connected to a few more people and so on until we had this, quite honestly, large group of people who were all enthusiastic about enthusiastic about accessibility, but from different aspects. So like different platforms. And, but then we had like, we had designers who were interested, testing, uh, PMs, management, all that sort of thing. And it grew from just me plodding away uh, at my desk, muttering about accessibility to (laughs) meetings of like 10, 12 people who are very enthusiastic and making game plans Mm -hmm. and all that. If you are interested, um, I would definitely check out Malika's talk. It's amazing. It's a great step-by-step process. And you have this really great whole kind of structure, which we kind of hinted at a little bit before about kind of answering those old book report questions, I think is what you call yeah. them from like school. You know, the who, the what, the where, the when, and the how. And Malika basically goes through that in terms of accessibility. And I think that um, as we all try to kind of move forward and make our apps more accessible, we need a good plan. And Malika has a pretty decent one, which you should totally check out. I'm very excited. And I, I want to thank you so much for first giving the talk and second for coming in to chat with thank us Thank you for bit. inviting me. Well, if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, my Twitter is at Malika Android. I don't know if you know how to spell my name. Well, we're going to okay, have, it, like, gonna right have it right here. here right there. All right. So, so, okay. so the users will be all set. So it's see, vis- visual notification as well yeah. as a- audio notification of or yeah. I- information. So I mean, there's only like five tweets on it now. So if you follow me, I'll have more people to follow. Yeah, just follow wait, back. Yeah, so just, just, we'll, we'll all start following Malika so we can encourage I'm, like, you to I'm like very new to Twitter. <laughs> well, welcome. And, and we will be happy to follow you as well. All right. But thank you so much for coming on. And uh, thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.